right, this is my review of Project Varanus Salvatori slash Varanus Variation. Uh, this is a hybrid project from Toothless Reptiles where they are essentially breeding female Asian water monitors, uh, Varanus Salvatore. Um, one was bred to a male crocodile monitor, uh, Varanus Salvadori, and the other was bred to a lace phase uh, lace monitor, uh, Varanus Varius. Uh, before I do get into it, I just want to say uh, this is in a, a hate video. Um, I think it is an interesting project. Um, this is just me giving my opinions and a review uh, on what's been released so far. Um, today is September 19th, uh, so this will be part one, of, it, and this will include everything that's uh, been released uh, as of now. Um, I might make a follow-up uh, as more comes out. And just really quickly, uh, for the sake of it, my background is uh, in biology. I'm graduating college uh, in December with a degree in biology. And, with a, and I focused a lot on animal science as well as uh, evolution and development. The material I'll be reviewing is the uh, project summary that was posted on toothlessreptiles.com. Um, as well as the information gathered from the YouTube video they posted. So just getting into it, I don't know if this was supposed to be written from a scientific standpoint um, or if this was just kind of something they put together to get people interested. Um, but one thing I did notice right off the bat from reading this was when they are writing the scientific names, um, the Varanus, whatever species, the, the, the species is supposed to be a lowercase. Um, I think throughout the entire paper, uh, they do keep a capital. So that, I mean, that is incorrect. That's just not supposed to be written like that. So uh, starting at the beginning with the title, um, Project Varanus Salvatori slash Varanus Variation. Um, if that's what they came up with as a title, awesome. What I don't like is that in a way it kind of conveys that this now hybrid animal is a new species. And by combining the names like that, you are kind of... Uh, misleading in a way. Um, I mean, the, the correct scientific name for the cross of these animals would be the scientific name of the male, uh, and then X, and then the scientific name of the female. Um, so I can I mean, I, Varanus salvatori, all right, that's catchy. Um, I'm not too sure about Varanus variation. Um, still a cool name, though. Cool name for a project. Um, so getting into it here, we see just um, a couple lines in, third line, um, says the project is focused on hybridization, uh, which is great. I mean, if that's, if that is their goal of this project is to just create hybrids, so be it. I mean, I know that's not everybody's thing, um, but if that's what they choose to do with their animals, that's fine. And I mean, if that's where the rest of this paper went, um, that'd be one thing, but I do kind of feel like it kind of flip-flops around a few different things. Um, so right after that, um, there's two two sentences that I kind of have a problem with. Um, it says, in recent years, with the advances of DNA testing in reptiles and mammals, many theories have begun to surface pertaining to how seemingly similar animals came into being. Scientifically and statistically, it is more likely that most monitor species shared at one point a common ancestor and as animals settled into their specific environments and regions they began to develop certain strategic differences which helped them thrive. Um, to me this is them hypothesizing that uh, essentially evolution. Um, I mean that's two sentences pretty much summing up how evolution works. Um, we have the genus Varanus, um, which based on a phylogenetic tree would have to have a common ancestor. And then natural selection, once these animals are in their environments, would di dictate um, those differences that they say that their uh, environments, uh, that their environments, they need to thrive. So in a way, I don't really like the way they phrase that. Um, Frankly, I don't think that sentence even needs to be there. I mean, to me, they're just pretty much saying, look at this phylogeny. Um, 
we think it has a common ancestor. Um, and then right after they essentially make this claim that uh, evolution is responsible for phylogenies, uh, which we know, um, they, they do talk about DNA testing and that all dogs are genetically identical to wolves, um, which obviously we know is true. Um, but I don't really see what they're trying to say there. Um, I mean, genetic relatedness and being identical, um, I, I don't really know what they're trying to get out there. Um, right after that, they start to talk about how they're not trying to create anything taboo or unnatural. Um, I would disagree with that. I mean, these animals are not overlapping in nature. Um, so this is not a naturally occurring hybrid. Um, so I don't really know how that could be considered, it could be considered natural. And then after that, they kind of go into talking about their DNA relatedness project. And they're going to use that to look at the reptile's biology and see if it was meshed or from a common pool. Um, I'm not extremely familiar with their DNA relatedness project, but from what I read, it was um, something they put together to determine if uh, a water monitor was parthenogenic, parthenogenically produced um, or not, which seems like a good implication to have. I mean, it's something that would be useful you know, if we get a mystery clutch and we want to figure out where it came from. Um, however, I don't see the point of having to breed these animals. I mean, we can collect DNA separately. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to have to, to create an, a, essentially a third animal here when uh, we, we have both of the animals and are more than able to collect the DNA and process it and determine genetic relatedness from that. And then right after that, it says, uh, basically, we can take a step backwards in this evolutional theory to help us move forward. Um, the way I'm interpreting that is that they're saying that this hybrid, um, either of these hybrids, would give a look back in time as to what a common ancestor would have been, um, which we know is not correct. We, we could see traits that the common ancestor potentially possessed, uh, but in no way does a hybridization show us what the common ancestor would have been. Um, in a lot of ways it shows us what it could have been, but in all, it really does not, it's not the most accurate way to determine what that common ancestor would be. After that, they, the next paragraph kind of goes into, it talks about the pairing. Um, just as which animals were paired up and the eggs they have, they've been confirmed to be fertile and they're incubating and when roughly when they expect them. Uh, the next paragraph kind of starts to go into um, justifications on why they chose uh, to use female water monitors, uh, which makes sense. You know, we've dialed in on the reproductive cycling and breeding habits of the animals. Um, then it talks about uh, the female carrying the egg will be the one donating most all the genetic material needed for conception. Um, I did see on the Facebook page today uh, there was a little bit of um, a disagreement with that, uh, mostly kind of citing other reptile hybrids that they don't necessarily uh, resemble the mother more so than the father. Um, uh, my opinion on that is I don't know every reptile hybrid pairing I don't know if anyone has ever proven that if you pair this female and this male, you get this, and it's the same if you swap them. Um, but in general, when we do talk about a hybridization, we, it is safe to say that it would possess more of the female's characteristics. Um, simple summary for that is we have the zygote, which is the, the fused gamete, the fertilized egg. Um, which does contain nucleus of the sperm and the egg, the original egg. Um, but the fact is that it has more cytoplasm from the egg, uh, which has that uh, mitochondrial DNA, uh, only, f or not necessarily only, but more so from uh, the female, um, which would then be passed down to the offspring. So in this case, we'd be passing down that, uh, that female's water monitor uh, mitochondrial DNA, which is a safe assumption to say it's going to resemble the water monitor more so than either the lace monitor or the crocodile monitor.
I mean, one thing I definitely can say I would have liked to see done here, or maybe even done in the future, um, would would be to use the other sex. I mean, there's so little known about the crocodile monitor uh, reproduction that I think it, in a lot of ways, could have been more effective to have used a male water monitor and a female crocodile monitor, um, even if it was happening at the same time as this project. So we can kind of start to zone in on, you know, what's what's not going correctly, you know, is it is it the timing, is it, you know, this, is it the incubation, the nesting, etc. The, art, the article then goes in to talk about how uh, by using the females, water monitors um, to fail safe because they do have DNA samples of parthenogenic animals from both of those species, um, which I think is a huge, uh, that's a huge thing to use because you can determine if uh, these eggs that are currently hatching as of today, there were some pictures I saw yesterday, um, if it is from a retained sperm, if it is a parthenogenic clutch, or if it is in fact uh, that cross. And it kind of goes on then to talk about uh, what they expect these crosses, assuming they go through, uh, to look like. Um, nothing I really, I mean, nothing to disagree with there. I mean, they talk about normal, uh, visual normal animals bred together, shouldn't produce anything wild. Um, then they talk about a co-dominant animal hybridizing with a normal animal again. Uh, that's been done a few different times and proven out that, I mean, they could hit that codominant trait, um, or at least an animal that resembles something like it. Um, then talk about, you know, once once it's proven that these animals are uh, dual parented um, from the intended pairings, uh, they'll start husbandry and observing the animals. Who kind of go on then to say no one's ever really uh, completed a project like this um, using this much uh, scientific notation. Which, I mean, I'm, I've never heard anything. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of debate if other people have managed to produce this cross in the past. Um, but there's no doubt that, uh, I mean, th that no one has ever gone to this extent um, to prove if it is or is not that cross. I mean, I, I know I, I did um, propose at one point that the uh, just the physical act of the mating, maybe not even necessarily a fertilization, uh, could have potentially prompted uh, these female water monitors uh, to go through the process of laying or even uh, parthenogenesize the eggs themselves. Um, and again, that's something we'll, we'll see in the upcoming time as they uh, do collect this DNA. After that, they, they make some uh, more predictions on, uh, I guess, what this animal is going to look like, um, behavior too. Uh, talk about how they're excited. It's a cool project. I mean, don't get me wrong. And then one thing I did like at the end, I did like, was uh, they talked about how these animals are not uh, going to be for public sale. Uh, which I know, again, I mean, if you sell it to someone who knows what it is, that's one thing. Um, but, I mean, it could get weird down the road. Um, I mean, it's not really muddying the gene pool because, I mean, these animals aren't exactly easy to produce. Um, so it's not like anyone who isn't aware of uh, these animals or this project, for that matter, at this point, um, is going to pick these up and accidentally pair them up and, you know, have 25% crocodile monitor uh, water dragons or anything like that. Or, um, excuse me, water monitors, not, not water dragons, obviously. Um, so, I mean, overall, I, I like the project. Um, I like hybrids. I think they are cool. I mean, obviously they don't have any substantial reason to exist. Um, but I mean, if you're looking for a cool animal that you can't really get anywhere else, I mean, that's obviously something that's cool if that interests you. Um, what I don't like is that they kind of, in a way, are saying, and maybe I'm wrong, but this is how I'm interpreting it, that by producing this hybrid, um, they're going to get an idea of the genetic relatedness of these animals um, to kind of build a phylogeny, since they don't directly say that, or evolution, um, even though we are aware that they are in the same genus. I mean, the, the phylogenetic tree of Varanus exists, um, can be found, 
Um, and again, you don't need to breed animals together to determine their genetic relatedness. I mean, I'm not, I mean there's obviously issues of hybridizing animals. I mean, they've obviously, um, again, if this is the, the cross, we've surpassed all the pre-zygotic barriers. Um, so the egg was able to be fertilized. Um, then, I mean, maybe down the road we, you know, we find out if um, there's any post-zygotic barriers, such as, I mean, you know, how will this animal be fertile? Uh, will it produce infertile offspring? I mean, that's something to see. Um, but again, I don't understand what they mean by a look back in time. We know that hybrids are not an accurate uh, representation of a common ancestor. Um, I mean, I forget where I even found it, but Varanus originated, you know, around 40 million years ago, and it was only 15 million years ago that there was a, uh, a tectonic connection between Australia and Southeast Asia. Um, it's kind of connecting all of these animals. So, I mean, they're not uh, super, um, you know, far on the phylogeny. Um, I mean, if anything, the lace monitor and the crocodile monitor are more so related than either is to the water monitor. So I think, I mean, really that would have been a cool pairing to see, because I mean that, if anything, would uh, give you a better look um, at genetic relatedness to, to show you, you know, these animals are closely related and this is what they can make when bred together. So as of right now, I, I mean, I have not seen the babies, you know, obviously no DNA testing has been done, or at least not released. Um, I mean, we don't have any way of knowing if if this is the cross or not. Um, but I mean, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked um, to find out that the animals in the same genus are uh, able to produce offspring. Um, but again, it's I'm just a little bit unclear on what their focus of the project was. Was it to just produce a hybrid? Um, I mean, I, if, it, if they're trying to show you what the common ancestor looked like, that's not correct. And if they're trying to determine genetic relatedness, I mean, we can do that uh, without breeding these animals. So that's my opinion on, on uh, this whole thing. Um, let me know what you think. I mean, if you think something else, I'll listen. I mean, if you listen to all this at this point. Um, I just wanted to try and clear up a couple things in there that I wasn't um, a big fan of, but I mean, again, overall, this isn't um, a hate video. I think it's a cool project. Um, I mean, when you do publish stuff like this, you mean, you know, there is criticism that follows, positive and negative. Uh, but again, this isn't a video to bash on this project. Um, I think it's really cool overall. Um, I think it has a lot of potential uses down the road for research on that crocodile monitor breeding. Um, I mean, other hybrids are cool too. I mean, this, we're not limited here, but I think this is a really good start overall.